You asked for it, you got it, Avatar fans. What's up, guys? I'm Chris Carr, and today we're going in-depth on all the sub-bending scene in the world of Avatar. Before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout-out to our super nerd sponsor of the day, Some Assembly Required 75. Thanks to SAR75 and all our donors on Patreon, we're able to keep making videos and undergoing fewer conversations with our parents about getting other jobs, like, but Chris, you'd be so great at culinary school. If you want to help out, head over to our Patreon page and see if a donation tier works for you. We'll thank you with shout outs, behind the scenes stuff, gag reels, and more. If you can donate, it's totally okay. Liking, sharing, and subscribing are awesome ways to show your support. Let's get to bending. When we're talking about subbending, we're talking about the specialized bending techniques that exist within each of the four bending arts water, earth, fire, and air. These sub skills can usually only be accessed by skilled benders and often requires the bender to have some sort of deeper understanding of their bending art form, as opposed to just sheer raw power. Understanding others, the other elements, and the other nations will help you become whole. We've talked in other videos how over time, certain subsets seem to be more easily accessed by a greater number of benders, such as metal bending and lightning bending, while others, like blood bending, remain accessible to a select few. We'll be covering all the bending the show clues us into, regardless of mastery level. Let's first start with a subset of bending we see early on in Avatar The Last Airbender, healing. Healing! While this definitely is a special ability that only some waterbenders possess, it does seem to be a more common capability than other subskills. Are you here for the healing lesson? Waterbenders who can heal do so by drawing upon the life-giving properties of water and are able to address physical wounds, illnesses, and even some spiritual and mental issues. Basically, the bender uses the water as an impetus for redirecting energy paths around the body. The effectiveness of the healing goes hand in hand with the skill level of the bender. Some benders, like Katara, instinctually have this ability without proper training. Because of the patriarchal structure of the Northern Water Tribe, healing was originally an aspect of waterbending only taught to female benders. Over time, male healers would become more common. Here, the women learned from Yagoda to use their waterbending to heal. I don't want to heal, I want to fight! This subbending ability does have its limitations. It can't treat scars like Zuko's Agni Kai mark, birth defects such as Toph's blindness, or internal injuries like the blow dealt to Jet during his battle with Long Feng. Healing can also be used to detect areas of the body where chi is blocked. That being said, water healing is not a remedy for blocked chi, as it cannot undo that blockage. What's wrong with him? He doesn't look injured. His chi is blocked. Like anything, though, rules are made to be broken. You can ignore all of the above if you're a healer who is using super mystical water. We see this with the water Katara takes from the Spirit Oasis. That water is able to heal the fatal wounds Azula dealt to Aang. Healing in the series was inspired by Reiki, an alternative medicine practice said to heal energy. This literal hands-on or palm healing technique is said to transfer energy from the palms of the practitioner to the patient in order to encourage healing and was developed in Japan back in 1922. Spirit Bending Taking this idea of healing further, we also have Spirit Bending, a healing variation that allows the bender to instill balance or imbalance within a spirit. This technique was created by Unalak, Korra's uncle, who taught it to Korra. While this ability is pretty ambiguous in the series, I'll do my best to explain this unique skill set. All right, so basically the practitioner is able to change a spirit's negative energy into positive energy, or vice versa. The technique calls for a waterbender to encircle a spirit with water, and from there, somehow their energy can be shifted. When a spirit begins to glow a bright yellow, they've gone positive, and often the spirit fades away or assumes some sort of pacified form. And when shifting to negative, the energy glows purple. So you know purple, color of the devil, it's a weird choice, I think. According to Unalak, this evil purple variation had the potential to destroy a human soul. We see a glimpse of this when Unalak tries to destroy Korra's in the episode A New Spiritual Age. <laughs> He's a pretty shitty uncle. He's no Iroh, I'll tell you that for free. Your spiritual training has come a long way. Unalak may be a horrible person, but his spirit powers are no joke. This technique, while obviously effective on the vast majority of spirits, is not effective on spirit binds. Blood bending. Let's round out our water subset with some seriously spooky bending, blood bending. This sub art is revered as the darkest and deadliest among all the bending arts and their specializations. The first known bloodbender was Hama, a waterbender who had been imprisoned by the Fire Nation during the Hundred Year War. 
While in the Fire Nation facility, she realized that since all living things contain water within them, she could push herself to bend the water inside any and all organisms. Lip bending essentially makes you a puppet master, able to manipulate and control the movements of another. Enforcing your own will over theirs. Once I had mastered the rats, I was ready for the men. <laughs> this is an extremely tricky technique to master. Thus, only a handful of waterbenders have been able to perform blood bending. What? Uh, 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 to me. Uh. The blood bending movements are based on kina, a Chinese martial arts technique designed to lock an opponent's limbs and neutralize them. As we know, waterbenders have their powers heightened during the full moon, and most bloodbenders are only able to tap into that ability with that power surge. That being said, we know of three benders in Korra who are able to bloodbend whenever, Yakon, Tarlock, and Amon. These three also trained extensively and are known to be benders who can access a psychic bloodbending ability. This allowed them to telepathically control their victims with limited movement, such as the twitch of an eye. Particularly skilled bloodbenders are able to launch their victims into the air, across short distances, can render multiple people unconscious, as we've seen during Yakon's trial in Korra, and can be used to crush someone's internal organs. Bloodbending is also the only known bending technique that can drive a victim insane. It's the Cruciatus Curse of Avatar. Through bloodbending, Amon was able to seemingly remove bending capabilities by severing chi pathways. A lot of you have asked me before to specifically talk about chi bending, so let's explain how that's kind of a thing and kind of isn't. There's chi blocking, something a non-bender like Tai Li or Amon's cronies were capable of doing through pressure points. Energy bending, like what the Avatar can do, and obviously chi is energy flow, so here you go. And there's this blood bending shifty chi technique that seems only accessible to someone who has a strong mastery of water bending. Energy bending. So now that we know that that's a thing, let's talk about energy bending. Energy bending is the ability to bend life energy. It existed long before the four bending arts existed. One lion turtle will bestow this ability onto Avatar Aang, and thus that's passed on to the next Avatar, Korra, and assumingly all Avatars that follow should they master this technique. We see Aang use this ability to take away the bending of Ozai and Yukon, and Korra uses it to restore bending abilities in victims of Amon, such as Lin Beifong. While we don't know much about how this bending is done, we do know that the energy bender themselves must be very strong, as the process can completely corrupt them. Energy bending also seems to bleed into manipulating spirit energy and astral projections, such as when Korra projects her own spirit. Metal bending. Moving on to earth bending subsets, let's dive into metal bending. As we all know, metal bending was invented, or discovered if you will, by Toph Beifong. Toph would go on to perfect this method and open her own metal academy to teach others. This is one of those bending arts that seems to become way more common as we move into Korra, especially since Republic City has its own metal bending police force. Seismic Sense, another earthbending skill, Toph was able to perceive, target, and pull trace amounts of earth that could be found in refined metals and manipulate them. Since this technique revolves around the manipulation of impurities within metal, metals that are pure, such as platinum, cannot be bent. I'm afraid you won't be able to metal bend that wall, Chief Beifong. It's solid platinum. Not even your renowned mother could bend a metal so pure. Seismic Sense. All right, let's quickly side quest Seismic Sense. That's the ability to perceive vibrations through the ground, very similar to sonar or echolocation. Earthbenders can utilize this sense to create a map of their surroundings, or they can use it to detect if someone's lying based on their heartbeat and breathing resonating through the earth. So definitely makes sense why you'd put a buttload of earthbenders in charge of your criminal justice system. There's a tunnel beneath the workshop, running deep into the mountainside. Lava bending. Another earthbending specialization we see in the series is lava bending. We know Avatar Roku utilized this technique multiple times, and that other skilled earthbenders have been able to master this as well, like Gazin of the Red Lotus. But Lin would later discover he also possessed an aptitude for lava bending. Yeah! 
Incredible. You're a lava bender. This obviously is a technique that allows the user to manipulate lava, and has led many to speculate that firebenders could potentially be lava benders. This theory seems to be supported by the overlap in mud bending. If both an earth bender and water bender can perform that, albeit through different techniques, then there must be other potential overlaps in the bending arts. I personally feel that that might not be the case here. Molten rock is still rock, and lava bending appears to be more about putting enough pressure on that rock to manipulate it as a liquid. It's just liquid earth. Let me know your thoughts on that, though, in the comments below. Ha-ha! <laughs> lava time! Bet you didn't expect that! Lightning generation and redirection. On to firebending subskills, we've got lightning generation and redirection. With this technique, a firebender can produce and guide a bolt of lightning with their fingertips and the use of circular motions. The bender must also be in a good place mentally in order to separate the energies of yin and yang. The bender is guiding the lightning, not necessarily controlling it. These moves take a lot longer to charge up than fire attacks. Some firebenders, like Ozai and Mako, can generate lightning really quickly. And I guess all those dudes at the electric plant? That is still crazy to me. Prior to the Hundred Year War, we only knew of Azula, Ozai, and Iroh as lightning benders. But I guess if you're gonna usher in an industrial revolution, you're gonna need to figure out how to power that schniz. The redirection part of this is a technique that was developed by Iroh after he studied master waterbenders and realized that redirecting the pathway rather than facing attack head on was far more effective. Again, this becomes a much more widespread technique as we enter the age of Korra. <laughs> Generally speaking, the lightning bending technique is particularly taxing on a bender's chi. If you let the energy in your own body flow, the lightning will follow it. The stomach is the source of energy in your body. It is called the sea of chi. Combustion bending! We also have combustion bending. That's telekinetic fire bending, Kyle. This ability channels chi through the forehead and is typically marked by a third eye tattoo. The user shoots powerful beams out of their face. It is bananas! Combustion bending can instantaneously evaporate large bodies of water, blow up chunks of earth, counterattacks, and more. We see all that when Sparky Sparky Boom Boom Man comes after Team Avatar. We also see how deadly this technique can be to the benders themselves. Combustion Man blew off his own limbs prior to mastering this technique. Flight! The other bending arts have a lot of specializations, but air often seems like it's singularly focused. If we're to look at unique techniques, we obviously have to explore the power of flight. This is an insanely rare skill. Only one other airbender in history had the ability. How'd you figure out how to do it? I found true freedom. Zaheer was the only airbender in hundreds of years to access this ability. Basically, the user must denounce all earthly desires and achieve true freedom. Unlike strong firebenders, who seem to use their bending to achieve flight via a sort of jet propulsion, airbending flight looks like your typical Superman flying. No whirlwinds or gimmicks, just straight up levitation and movement. Ah! Ah! Spiritual projection. Airbenders can also master spiritual projection. This complex technique demands that the bender is incredibly spiritual, as they'll need to move their spirit through the physical realm. To create a good projection, the user must work in a quiet environment that's free from distractions so they can focus. Help! You have to get Korra and the rest of us out of here now! Hurry! Finally! Spiritual projections enable a bender to implore their surroundings while bypassing physical obstacles. We see Jinora utilize this technique in Legend of Korra. If a user were to use this technique during a particularly spiritual time, such as during Harmonic Convergence, the projection would be maintained for a much longer period of time and appear way more distinct. Mommy, it's Denora! What? Let me see! <gasps> be careful, sweetie! I would love to hear your thoughts and theories on subbending. Many fans have speculated there's potential for a lot more bending specializations, like flesh bending. Ugh, so gross. As always, let me know if I missed anything. I'm just one lady. Hit me up in the comments, and if you want more videos, just click to the left of my face. Once again, a big thank you to all of our sponsors on Patreon, and thank you for watching. See you, Space Cowboy.